that he has posted on here. And since we are now one week into the league, this will be my final update for my EA Ballista League starter. So I'm really sorry that I couldn't make more updates, but my voice has been kind of killing me. I've been streaming every day and afterwards I had really big problems to actually push out a video after that. I just had a cold and after that my throat just kind of stayed bad. But uh, whatever, with that being said, we're going to go into the last update here. And I wanted to give some additional info because I get a lot of the same questions on my stream. And most of them revolve around the bow, right? The coloring... Uh, how do I make an end end game bow? So we'll go over that in detail. But on top of that, I'm also going to give some more uh, interesting ideas maybe on how to get this build a little bit further. Further meaning into end game, right? Um, so what I want to say is obviously this is a league starter. This is meant, meant as a lead, league starter. It gives you a very smooth start into the league, but that doesn't mean that you can't invest a little bit more. It's probably good to at some point switch into something else because once you get into like the 50, 100 exalt range, there's builds that scale better out there. But there's actually some new uh, tech out there that I want to talk about, uh, which some of my viewers uh, made me aware of. So we'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, but let's first talk about the plus free bow. So before we start, I just want to point out that we're working with a six sling short bow and you get that from the porcupine divination card. And once you have it, you get an easy six link to craft on. Now, if we click on a short bow here and look at it, right? What you will see here is it has very low um, dexterity requirement. And the way coloring works in this game is the higher the requirement, the more skewed um, the bow or whatever item is uh, to get those colors on the item. So what that means is if you have an endgame bow with 212 dex requirement, every off color will be really hard to roll. But since we have a short bow... Um, it is actually incredibly easy. And I'm saying this because a lot of people have been asking me about the colors. There is four off colors in this build and everybody's like, how am I get four off colors on a bow? So just in case you don't know this tool already, if you're not sure how to color something, there is something called the Verici Chromatic Calculator. Now you put in the amount of sockets. In this case, we have six. The dexterity re requirement is 26, right? And our desired colors is three red, two green and one blue so four off colors and now it will calculate the best way to get that item so if we calculate you will see that the best way to get four off colors is just simply a chromatic orb and the average cost is 68 chromatics which is very easy to get and i maybe i should have made this a little bit more clear in the video right i get it um but i would have made more of a deal out of it if it was that hard uh definitely save this one um just the tab somewhere of a chrome calculator always nice to know but let's go to the crafting part i will explain to you how to make an entry level plus two bow uh, how to make a good plus free bow kind of like mid-range and then how to finish it up with a really good plus free bow which one of these you're gonna want is basically gonna depend on where you are in the game currently uh, this is more for when you can afford porcupine cards for the first time this one is extremely easy to make right uh, this one is going to be more for, okay, now you're already in red maps, you're farmed a little bit more. And this one is going to be, I don't know, you have like 5 to 10 exalts lying around. So first up, this craft is basically for whenever you first get the bow, right? Entry level plus 2 bow. Now you can accidentally hit the plus 3 on the first one. The chance is around about 1 in 30. So if you do that, uh, awesome, right? You already did the second one as well. Uh, but basically you want to use a shrinking essence of dread. You don't have to have the highest one deafening, only shrinking, right? Um, you throw it on. And then you get something like this, for example. Now, you have to be careful because fire damage breaks your EE, right? But attack speed, for example, would be good. So what you could do here is if you have an annul, you can try to remove the fire damage. If you do, it works. If not, it doesn't. But usually annul orbs are too expensive to waste. I uh, just wanted to point that out. But you just put another one. Now, these as of this recording are like three to four chaos each. And at this point, you're basically good to go because all you need is plus two to level bow gems. The rest doesn't really matter. And then all you want is crafted attack speed. So you craft on attack speed, right? Obviously, don't use the one that costs one exalt, just the T2 one. And you get like, for example, nine to 10 attack speed. Now, if you accidentally rolled into attack speed, right? Sure, then you can put on fire damage over time multiplier and the bow is going to be even better what i will say is this is like the very basic start right i had this one up to like t15 t16 maps it is not that big of a deal the main reason you want this bow in the first place your damage is not going to go up that much more over for example a storm cloud but the thing is you're not going to get a six link storm cloud a six link short bow is way easier to get so what that means is it frees up your chest slot now you don't have to use tabby anymore no tabula rasa anymore right because uh, you only need one six link which means you can get life you can get resistances you can get spell suppression on your body armor which will make you a lot tankier but what if you want a upgraded bow well in that case what you will do is the same thing as before uh, but you will also want to hit plus one level of socketed 
gems. And basically the way you do that is you're going to spam these dreads over and over. Like I said, right now, these are like three to four chaos a pop. And as you can see here, on average, it's going to take you 30 tries to get there. So here we are at the good plus free bow, which means you want to hit uh, with the essence, the plus one, and you have, want to have an open suffix for the attack speed roll again, right? Uh, so if we go over here, all you would do is you would just uh, you would just basically spam these until you get plus one. Now, while you're spamming, what I will say is that you can accidentally get into a really good bow here. So for example, what I hit here is plus one to level of bar, uh, uh, socketed bow gems, and then I have a, a high elemental damage mod. Once again, you don't want fire damage because it breaks your EE, but if it's lightning or cold damage, this will actually give you better single target damage or better damage in general, right? Uh, so there is a trick to how you can force plus one level socketed bow gems here, which is quite expensive. Um, but if you have a bow like this, it's actually worth it. So you can accidentally stumble into something like this. And basically what you do is in the suffixes, there's a, uh, wait, actually, let me, um, let me get myself over here real quick. Uh, there's a roll down here, which says cannot roll attack modifiers. And this one costs one exalt, right? But if you put it on, so this is basically, you have to have one prefix open and one suffix open. If you have two suffixes open, you can slam a suffix, which is bad, right? So this is the scenario where you can do this and you do cannot roll attack modifiers on it, right? Um, boom. And now the thing is, all the attack modifiers are gone. You cannot slam an attack modifier and all that's left that you can roll is always plus one. So you get your plus free bow with a lightning damage roll on top. So if this happened to you, you just won the game. You can skip number three and you have a bow, for example, like I have. Like I did this on this one. I hit the uh, lightning damage and the attack speed, right? And then I um, did the uh, cannot roll uh, attack modifiers and I got the plus one on top and then I crafted fire damage over time multiplier at the end. But let's just say we aren't that lucky, right? Let's remove this modifier and let's remove the lightning modifier. Let's say you spammed this on average 30 times and now this is the outcome that you got. You're basically done. You have the plus three and now you do the same thing as you did before. Uh, you craft on the attack speed. So boom, attack speed. Once again, it's not worth to go for a one exalt craft attack speed and you're finished. And now you basically have a uh, sorter number two bow. Now going from a good to a really good bow, all that really changes is you want to have one extra mod on it, which means the strategy does not change. All that changes is you need to hit more than just the plus one. You need to hit either attack speed on top or another elemental damage mod. So for example, let's just imagine that we hit attack speed here, right? So let's say we hit T2. And now we can do the same thing again that we did already, right? Um, we go for the um, uh, cannot roll attack modifiers here, and then we slam again, which will once again always give us the plus one on top of the plus two. But this time, since you already have the attack speed, number one, it's actually good attack speed. And number two, now you can go for another craft, which is fire damage over time multiplier. So let's just craft that on real quick. T1 goes up to 20%, and that's roundabout. 8 to 12% more damage depending on how much you already have, right? But basically, now you have the same bow as on number 2, but on top, you already have the attack speed on, so you get another 20 dot multi on top. Now, the same thing could have happened in reverse. Let's say, for example, uh, that this would be something else, right? Let's say that this is actually something you don't really want. For example, crit chance, right? But in the prefix, instead of this one, you had a good elemental roll. Let's say this time around, cold damage, uh, the highest you can roll is kind of like, let's see T2, right? Um, you hit the T2 cold damage, and now you have to craft on the attack speed, right? Obviously, because you don't have it yet, uh, but you got the extra cold damage, which would probably get around to the same amount of damage as if you had the fired out multi, right? So there's a lot of ways to get to a really, really good bow. And this time around on a bow like this, you can actually put on the one exalt craft to get the um, min max bow. So I hope this could give you a little bit of clarity. I just want to make sure that you understand the bow is very nice. It's a very, very good upgrade, uh, but it is not as important as, for example, getting your unnatural instinct. And I understand it's really expensive right now, but getting this one is so crucial. Getting your cluster jewel set up, um, those should probably be way more important. Same as that Polaric Devastation. If you think about what a good bow could run you, 20% um, more damage is roundabout what you can expect from a bow. And these cost like three to four exalted right now. Um, so those are probably priorities you want to do before. Also, if you can get like a plus two amulet, if you get lucky with a combinator, for example, that is also a huge damage. Upgrade. Now, next up, let's talk about some end game upgrades that you could be doing as well. And this has to do with two jewels. Now, one is not really new, but it's still an interesting idea. It is using a thread of hope. So one of my viewers actually made me aware of this and 
as the tree is currently, right, you can see this. But what he said is, if you would do a large Fight of Hope here, what happens is this, right? So we can skip these small nodes, and we path the dexterity here, and then we take this jewel, right? And what you can take here is one with nature, quick step, which are very good. But on top of that, there's three more notables in the in the radius. So number one, aspect of the eagle. This has a good mixture of damage over time, accuracy, attack speed. It's a huge point, right? You have Master Fletcher. The proc speed doesn't really do that much. I guess it makes it easier to connect with enemies. But you get a ton of accuracy and attack speed, right? And then also this. This is like straight up 50% increased elemental damage. Absolutely huge. Now, these points are really good. What they definitely do is they make it, uh, they make accuracy a lot less of a concern. You get 10% here, 20% here. That is like a prefix on a quiver, for example. So now you're open to more quiver bases. So, for example, you can get attack speed in the base. And overall, this is a pretty cool idea. It just depends on what your gear is, but this could definitely fit, right? Uh, do note that this also gives you a minus to all redmond lit. All elemental resistances, which you would have to figure out as well. But I think this could be a really uh, a good replacement. Just depends on what your gear is. And second thing, which is very interesting, is actually this one here. It is the impossible escape with iron reflexes. If you don't know this jewel, it's a new addition. Uh, passives in radius of iron reflexes can be allocated without being connected to the tree. So to demonstrate, if I put this anywhere in my tree, it doesn't matter where this jewel is in particular. Right? Let's say I put it here. Now... Outside of this iron reflexes, I can take whatever I want. Just to clarify, you cannot take the keystone itself, just around it, right? One problem with this is um, you cannot take surveillance, and surveillance is insanely strong, right? This is absolutely insane. This is more damage, attack speed, increased damage. You will have to anoint this node, right? Which will mean no hired killer, which is kind of like weird. Um, but you do get Panopticon, and you can take Ironwood. Um, one thing I would say that speaks a little bit against this, we actually tried this out on stream, is these small nodes are actually pretty damn good. Usually a lot of these strats with like, I don't know, taking notables is about cutting out these bad small nodes. But these nodes are pretty darn solid, so there's not that much to it. You also lose Golem's Blood, it doesn't reach there, right? There's not really anything else in the radius. So this would be very interesting for a build that, for example, wants to completely cut the part down here like in total. For example, let's say you have the glove exposure, right? And you want to completely cut the elemental equilibrium. You could do something drastic like this and reimagine the build, right? Because now you don't need to go there anymore. If you put the jewel in, right? Let's just copy it in here right now real quick. If you put the jewel in here, just anywhere, um, you can just take this, take this, anoint this, and all of these nodes are freed up, right? So what you could do theoretically is, I don't know, path here, take Breath of Flame, take this, take Cruel Preparation. I don't know if this is actually good, but it gives you a lot more flexibility, right? So this is more for if you want to experiment around or whatever. Uh, it's definitely an interesting one. You can also get Snowforge, which is minus five elemental resistances. Maybe you'll go down. Maybe you could do something with Left Shade, right? You get here. And now you can still get the uh, Life on Killed from, for example, Blood Drinker over here, right? You could path like this if you wanted to. Um, just a few ideas to throw out there. You will have to min-max this yourself, obviously. You could also connect to another large cluster jewel. Uh, your life would take a huge hit, though. So is this going to be good? I don't know. It's just something interesting to keep in mind. So overall, EA Ballista was a ton of fun. I will now probably go into a different build, but I will say that playing this one for a second time in a row, I thought it would maybe be boring or something, but it really wasn't. I'll definitely not play this another time. I want to be hipster. I really hope there's balance changes for next patch. Right now, I feel like the direction the game is going in, there's less and less leak starters that are viable, which kind of concerns me. But I hope that overall, everybody had a good leak start with this and I could guide you through it as good as I can. Um, I will now come out with a lot of new videos, a lot of new um, guides. If you don't, if you're new here, for example, usually after my leak starter, I go all out. I don't really do budget builds all that much. I want fun builds. I want fun interaction. We're going to craft a lot, right? That's usually what I'm up for. Um, so after this leak starter, we're going to go a little bit more bonkers. But yeah, hope you had a great leak start and uh, see you next time. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do stuff like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, this is it. A Ballista over. New chapter ready. Probably a mapper next. Maybe a bosser after that. We'll see. I uh, have a lot of ideas. We're going to talk about a lot of it on stream. stream. <clears throat> Sorry. So if you want to join, uh, definitely check that out. You will be informed before the YouTube crowd if you're live. Uh, but yeah, 
with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.